Hi, Dan Dustin here again. It's it's uh, become convenient for me to show you uh, a little bit of the history of tool handles, and I mean a little bit because, of course, there's so much, and uh, this is the best I can do at the moment, and I think you'll be uh, quite amused at this. Uh, every every shop, every commercial shop, uh, suffers from uh, the same disease. Every shop in all of history, without exception, has clients they can't say no to. And that's what's happened to me, is I've been asked by one of these people to uh, remove the plastic handle from her mother's favorite spoon and replace it with wood which is something that uh, I don't do, but uh, uh, that's, that's the principle, and I could tell you stories, and maybe someday I will. So, uh, let me, uh, I'll talk about this later. Uh, meanwhile, let me talk about, uh, about handles. Let's start out with the Indian, the uh, Abenaki Crooked Knife which is a made from a straight razor generally or sometimes a trade blade and that is let in uh, by a groove set into a groove and uh, lead is poured over it this is uh, there it is this is your standard uh, indian style crook knife this is one's left-handed and so am i that's one reason i bought it they uh back in and when i was younger they you get them for about 50 bucks. Now they're out of sight, of course. And notice that the lead never stands up forever. There's, there's no such thing as a, as a lead setting that works for very long. But when it loosens up, it's usually tied. And normally, uh, very commonly, it's tied with fine copper wire, which is another, another thing that the... Uh, that, that the Abenaki could get from the white man. So that's white man's razor and, and white man's wire. And look how, look how neatly it's, uh, it's been twisted here and there and probably done more than once. Sometimes you'll see where after the wire has been done, it has been uh, 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 leaded over again. Not in this case, but uh, uh, in uh, other cases. <coughs> Notice also the, uh, the little bit of, uh, of uh, a decoration. And, uh, and I, I, make, um, I made my early knives in, uh, in that same configuration that the thumb is held here. I don't use them that way, and neither do most, most of the Abenaki that I've seen. Uh, but here's my first one, and, and the, again, a straight razor. Uh, or made from a straight razor, and this is sandwiched. Uh, it's, it's two pieces of wood that's carved, carved to fit, and not quite, not quite tight, but works fine. And these are your standard harness rivets, which is are the rivets of the uh, of the woodshed of the New England farm, and uh, that can be held like this normally. I, I hold it like this. And here's a later one, uh, obviously far more refined. I guess we don't need these. Uh, uh, the nice thing about, and this is, uh, again, sandwiched in two-tube epoxy. And I, this, I've been using this for 30 or 40 years, and it's absolutely tight, and it's obviously going to be good forever. Uh, the nice thing about a straight razor is that the, the backs of a straight razor are very thick. And that means that your, your knife will turn. The, the, the greater the angle, the thicker the back of a blade, the, the better it turns in radius. And so that helps. So there's the crooked knife style. Uh, here's one I invented. Uh, this is going to excite you. It's a beautiful, beautiful knife. And uh, so what do you think of that? Okay, you see it? Well, I'll, give you, I'll give you a little hint. Okay, now you know what you're looking at, yes? Okay, there is a complete pocket knife inside here. I drilled a big hole, and I obviously was using uh, Gorilla Glue. Remember when Gorilla Glue was the thing? Well, there it is. And uh, the, the, the pocket knife was totally worn out, 
and one blade was broken. It was a two-blader, and this blade was loose. So I did this, and it's, now it's absolutely tight. It's a beautiful de detail knife. And, uh, I mean, you ha could get enough force out of the handle to break it if you wanted to, but, but, the, but you learn to use your tools. I remember who it was, Bud Stone on Little Hill in uh, Warner, New Hampshire. Uh, uh, he was an old timer and the, the young fellows all went to him for advice. And, uh, and we were all making ax handles at the time and Bud Stone's advice was, uh, you know, what, uh, how do you, what, what, Bud Stone's, <laughs> learn to use your ax. It doesn't, handle doesn't matter, learn to use your ax. Uh, this is one of my early knives. It was made by, uh, oh gosh, what was his name? I don't suppose it matters, he's been dead for decades. Uh, Charlie, Charlie, uh, I'll, I'll, think, I'll get this, I'll think of it. Foster, Charlie Foster. And, and this knife is made of a file. This is a file made knife. And uh, um, a lot of the wood carvers, the whittlers used files. It makes a good knife, except that they are brittle. And for me, because I work a lot of green wood, because I'm making my spoons of green wood, I really need saw steel. It's basically, traditionally, there are two kinds of steel, saw steel and file steel. Saw steel is flexible, the saws are set. And uh, so that's Charlie. What he did, his handle, he had just discovered, this was back in the early 70s, I, I knew him. Uh, he had just discovered epoxy putty. And he would go goobly, goobly, goobly on the end of his file and make a nice epoxy putty handle. It's not my preference, because of course you can sweat on them. You don't absorb. Uh, here is a traditional knife. Uh, I call this the prison handle. And is, this is a, uh, a table knife uh, shoved through a piece of uh, garden hose. I think a, I don't think there's anything shoved in there. No, you can see the light clean through. Uh, sometimes it'd be full of nails or something. And uh, taped with uh, um, electrician's tape, uh, covered with, this is an old one, covered with uh, uh, real friction tape. Friction tape is cotton, uh, you know, bed sheet basically, uh, uh, imbued with, uh, with tar, and that is uh, the last of the tradition. We used this stuff in the 50s. That was all we had, friction tape. We repaired our bicycle tires with friction tape. Uh, it's, uh, it relates historically, you know, to, to Egyptian mummies. They, they used linen uh, uh, woven linen uh, imbued with beeswax and stuff like that, I guess, and, and we don't anymore. This is uh, this is now changed. I suppose duct tape is as close as we got, but but uh, I was delighted to find that at the flea market for a buck, and I I, uh, I, I appreciate the craftsman craftsmanship. Uh, this one will knock your socks off. I found this at the flea market, and it has to be homemade. It could not possibly be a commercial knife. There's no marks on it. And somebody has taken this thing. This is a, a wrapping of fairly stiff uh, brass wire. It's not hooked or, or, or underhooked or anything. It's just wrapped and it can be pulled off. <laughs> and, and all it is is this taper. Uh, it's a nicely done taper, obviously turned. It's a very nice turning with a slot. And uh, this, was, this was the blade that came in it. And of course you can put it any, any length you want and slide this thing back on and twist it tight and you've got a, a solid handle. It, I thought that was really wonderful. Uh, and I had a problem when a glass top table uh, blew over, I had a glass top table with an umbrella through it and the wind blew and blew it over and the glass shattered and, and, and glass shards caught in the grooves of the duck, the, uh, the, the deck. And I, I broke this piece of wire off of a grill or something and hammered, hammered the, uh, this, this part flat uh, on the old farm anvil, which is out there. It's called uh, cold forging. And I put this thing together somehow. I think I put it together like this, of course. And, and I used this tool to, to work the glass out of the, uh, out of the grooves and, uh, and, 
and uh, it was very, very effective. And you, you can't have glass in the grooves of your deck because people walk around barefoot. And so, so there we are, and now we're down to the last type of handle. And uh, once you have seen this last type of handle, you're welcome to leave me if that's all you're interested in. Uh, and if not, uh, I will continue with, the, with this project, which uh, uh, I don't quite know what to do with exactly, but I know what I'm going to do. So, let's look at this knife. It's a beautiful knife made from a file. As you can see, I purchased it at the flea market. And I think it was German uh, from the look of uh, where, where its environment. And it's obviously a file. So that means that the tine of the file is rectangular. You know what a file tine looks like. So look at the uh, hole in the handle right here. Look right down here at the hole in the handle. You'll see there is a rectangular hole. And it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. It's got to be a hundred years old or more, and it's tight as tight it's tight as tight can be, and uh, it's octagonal. So, how was this hole made in this piece of wood? Aha! And this is uh, the trick: is you take a piece of of uh, uh, green wood, pine, and that's pine. Take a piece of green wood, soft is good, and uh, drive the, uh, in, in this case, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the maker drove the file as a file straight into a big piece of green pine and left it around for a while and then hewed it out uh, after it had become adjusted to itself. And this is very good hewing. What happens is you keep it square, and you keep it square so it's even, and then you uh, take the corners off. And if you have kept something square, axe handles are sometimes, once in a while you'll see an octagonal axe handle where someone has kept it squared, take the corners off, and sometimes you leave it because it's so nice. But that was how this was done. I'm absolutely convinced. There's, there's, see, it was, it was driven right into the center of the tree where there's kind of soft, see? And then, using the handle, it was ground into a knife. So you didn't have to drive on the end. You, uh, uh, that's, I'm, I, I'm making this up, but I'm sure I'm right. And here's some other exa examples. Here's a beautiful steel. Again, made from a file. I t tend to collect file made. You can see the teeth and the, the edges are absolutely round. This is for sharpening steel scrapers. Somebody signed it, which uh, proves he liked it. And here again, he, he's driven it into the end and then hewed it down and, uh, and rounded the corners and left it happily square. Uh, here's an example of uh, hundreds of years old. The guy drove a drilled a big big hole, and uh, the knife obviously had a flat tine. So the guy drilled a, drilled a big hole, drove the knife in, and uh, carved it out later, and notice it's also faceted from, from the hewing. And here's another very old one. I have no idea what the tool was used for. It's a beautiful, see, it's file made. And uh, that was, look at the square here. It was driven into green wood and carved afterwards. So that's what... Uh, Norris Patch taught me this technique, and this is, uh, here are a whole bunch that I've done, and I'm going to do it with this spoon. So if you come over here and, and see these, is, uh, uh, let me take a little break here. Here's a, here's a piece of, uh, butternut, which is soft, see, and that's been driven. What I do is I take a pair of, uh, I take a, uh, what do you call those locking pliers? Uh, oh, darn it, those locking pliers. I got some floating around here, I'm sure. Um, uh, uh, what do you call those things? It, it, uh, what the heck? Sorry. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm old enough to lose vocabulary. You know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about, those, uh, uh, those pliers that go snap. Here's one. Okay. 
these things, okay? Take one of these things, see, and uh, get the good and tight, and you, and you clamp it to the blade, see? You clamp the blade like this, see? Okay, and then you can drive on the pliers. And uh, that, what do you call those things? Anyway, so that's, that's how I would drive a blade. This is a commercial blade, so it came bent like that. And here's, here's what happens is uh, this is the result, okay? Here's the starter, and that's what happens when you carve it down. Doesn't look very much different from this one. In a hundred years, it'll be black. And uh, here's another one. I made the same, left-handed, made, made the same way. Here's, an, here's a beauty, not a sweetheart, okay? And see how it's a, that's a very finely carved, and yet it has not cracked. And that's the trick. Here's one that cracked, probably in use, and I, and I fixed it with string and epoxy, and that's never been really finished. And here's another one that failed. When they fail, you just try again. I mean, it doesn't cost anything. And uh, so I, I will use uh, epoxy or string or something when, when, when they fail. Uh, <clears throat> my favorite handle, my handle to go to, my first handle is always a corn cob. I believe the corn cob is the best handle if it works. The problem, of course, is strength. And here are corn cob handles. The, uh, the structure of a corn cob, you have the soft pith <clears throat> and a hard sleeve around it, and then you have the, uh, some more soft stuff. But a, uh, yeah, I made that knife. That's uh, forged. I forged that knife with a burns matic and a pair of round nose pliers. It's as good as any. It's just uh, most, mostly I, I buy them. Uh, but a corn cob will not give you blisters. And it has a grip you wouldn't believe. And it breaks in quickly. One thing about handles is, is an awful lot of knife handles are, are so hard that you, that you, they won't adjust to your hands. Most knife, most commercial knives, the handles won't adjust to your hand. Uh, the, the corn cob adjusts to your hand, breaks in fast, and it absorbs sweat, so you don't have any problem with moisture. It just uh, can use it all day. It's comfortable. Uh, it's a pretty one, isn't it? And, and uh, so I, uh, so I'll drill it out and, and glue the thing in. I don't really care how I do it. If, if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. But here are all corn cob handles. Here's another one from that. From that, from that remember uh, a Gorilla Glue? It, it's uh, when that was new. Boy, we used that for everything. <laughs> uh, interesting stuff. Very lightweight, which is kind of nice. Uh, here's a piece. Here's one done. I, it's there's the bed knife in here. I won't untie it. In, in mountain laurel, and here is a mountain laurel. Uh, one that is partly carved, and I think we're probably we're using it just the way it is. There's a, there's a crack; it doesn't matter. It uh, is tight as tight as tight as tight can be. Here's another one. I think this must be pine. A tiny little, lovely little detail knife, solid as a rock, <clears throat> just waiting to be carved. But this is show and tell for students, so that's how we do it. Uh, this is the piece de resistance, or this is the piece, this is wonderful piece. I found this uh, at the flea market, and I think I may have paid a quarter for it. I don't know. Look at that. This is uh, something made by an old timer years ago. The black is, of course, pine pitch, so he obviously worked in a, uh, a lumber yard. This, that's a timber <coughs> lumber. Um, pencil, that solid pencil lead there, and it was uh, under-drilled and driven in, and it's tight, and, uh, don't wiggle it too much, and uh, uh, whittled down, look at the whittling, See the, the very powerful hands whittled that, and whittle, whittle, crack, crack, and uh, we'll compare it to some student work. The idea I had, this is, in the, the fellow obviously drove a team or a truck, and he marked he marked lumber, and he needed to uh, he needed to handle this pencil without uh, you know put it in your pocket. You got to find it, 
It, uh, this is brilliant and made the same way as these things. This technique is, uh, if you never heard about it, it's, uh, it's an absolutely uh, standard technique. My idea was let's make our school teachers, this was for kids, make our teachers chalk holders so the teachers can hold the chalk. See, and notice the difference in the whittling. Is this guy, he was probably drunk, of course, and rap, rap and three or four cuts, and he's done. And here are about 30 cuts. Okay, this is the difference between amateur work, uh, and you see, but the, and artistically, there's, there's no comparison here, and that's, an, that's a bit of an art lesson, which is also important. Uh, the problem, of course, socially, is that just about the time we started making these for our teachers, the teachers stopped using chalk, and that's what happens. Uh, that's the world we live in. Okay. Uh, so let's move uh, to this piece. This is a rare piece of uh, curly maple from my firewood pile, not common. And what I have done is I have measured this, which is a quarter inch with some bumps. So this is, this is my father's drill index, Craftsman. He, we're a farm family, everything came from Sears. And I consider this a, uh, a family treasure. It's been around since I was born. I mean, I, I've never known this. this. This has been his since before I was born. Could be a hundred years old. I don't know, it's plastic. So I don't know how far it goes back. I was born in 46, so it could go back to the 30s easily. Uh, so I, I take out the drill and that's a quarter, it's a quarter inch. So this drill is in my drill and I drill this hole with it which is a hair under a quarter inch, see. So what I'm going to do is I'll get a piece of leather on this and, and I'll uh, put the big pliers. What do you call these things? They're not, cha not, not channel lock. They're uh, just locking pliers is a name for them. Uh, I, I've known it all my life, but I can't remember it right now. It's because I'm on TV, you know, it's exciting. And uh, uh, so I'll clamp the, the pliers to that and drive it in here. And then I'll begin splitting, and I'll split from this end. I'll put it on an edge here and split from this end. I won't cut it short. The reason I won't cut it short is because this is kept for pickup sticks. Here is a curly maple pickup stick made. You can see the grain there, I guess. If we can get it apart, get it, let's get it against something dark here. Uh, and this axe, you know, from, from yesterday's video, uh, I'm still looking for a volunteer to grind this thing. Uh, but you'll see that is a, a curly maple pickup stick. And I don't want to ruin this. I want to get pickup sticks out of it. So that's the reason why I will split this uh, long as far as I dare. And then I'll get up and I'll, I'll finally cut it here and get a uh, handle for the spoon. And I don't know how... I don't know how it will work. Here's the old handle, which is kind of fun. And it went like this, see? And it had this in it. So that's, that, this is the old handle. It stood up, must have been, must be 50 years or longer. And this spoon belonged to the uh, mother of this uh, woman to whom I cannot say no. And uh, so we'll make the handle. And I doubt it will be as good as the original, but it will do. And we're winding it up. Grandmother. Grandmother. Yes, grandmother's grandmother's spoon. So so this this is the doll lady and she's taught me a lot and been good to me for many years. Nope. No, okay. You won't tell the whole story, but she she bought a spoon from me. She wanted me to drill it full of holes. I didn't want to do it and it goes on from there. Uh, holes in wooden spoons are smaller than holes in metal spoons, even though they're the same size it's a, and so forth and so on. And I think it's time to let you go.